And we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to our Zoom participants. And hello to our FB Live viewers. So this is another live webinar series for a cause powered by Arriva Academy. Welcome to another series of our HR Virtual Summit PH Bounce Back. HR. So my name is Irish Malade Samson. I'm your host and joining me is Mr. Howell Mabalat as my co-host and our moderator. Hello, Sir Howell. Hello, Miss Irish. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Yes. Yung yung bilis, no? Friday na. Yeah. So everyone hang on. One week to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our topic this afternoon is don't waste a good crisis. How to thrive not just survive during a global pandemic. So we will be having a live, uh, an international speaker live from Singapore. Later, you'll got to meet him. But before that, let us first greet our international, our overseas per, um, participants. And they are from Kolkata, India. Surat, India. Hello, thank you for joining us. Makassar, Indonesia. Saigon, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Lanipur, Nepal, Singapore, Phuket, Thailand, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Denver, United States, and Golden, United States. Okay, thank you for joining us today. And in order for us to have a smooth flow of our e-learning session, here are the house rules. For those of you who are first-time viewers of our webinar, Please type in the chat box now, hi. Please type in hi now. And let us know where are you from so we can beat you as well, okay? Hello, Filipinas to Villa. Welcome to our webinar. Paolo Rivera from Makati. Okay. Lo Chuan, hello. Welcome to our webinar. Jomer from Makati. Okay, hello. And let's do a sound check. So you will be needing a good quality headset. Please use the following codes to let us know if we are loud and clear and audible. So you, please type in now 111 if you can hear us clearly. Let us check. Carla, thank you, loud and clear. Danica, Filipinas, Richard, Ronaldin, loud and clear and audible. Thank you, Cromwell. Maria Rosario. Okay, so 222 means you can hear us. 2121 means our sound is breaking up or there's a log. And question mark if you don't understand anything. So we're loud and clear. Let's move on. Okay, we will be having a quick break later after the presentation of our guest speaker and before we move on to our question and answer portion. Participants' microphones will be temporarily disabled by the administrator during discussion to avoid interruptions. Questions will be entertained after each topic of the session. For questions and clarifications during the provided time after each topic, please click the raise hand button for the administrator to enable the microphone for live questions. Yes, we will enter entertain live questions later in the Q&A portion. So type in your questions at the Q&A box. One question at a time will be entertained. For comments and feedback, please scan this QR code. This will be directed to our feedback form. And please give us your comments, suggestions, and topics to discuss for us to enable our, um, to improve our future e-learning sessions. Okay. And now, to discuss, don't waste a good crisis. How to thrive, not just survive during a global pandemic. Sir Howell, please do the honors in introducing our guest speaker today. Definitely, definitely, Miss Iris. Pero may hindi ka nabasa. Ang bilis nung mga nag-hi, di ba? Yes, may nakita yes. akong isa, si Ma'am Kathleen Rose Ang. Ma'am Kat, di ba? Sing Jen, Hello, Miss Kat. Yes, Ay, she Kat, is now, um, She's a cat hero. She rescues cats sa EDSA, sa Timo, kung saan man. Pag may nakita, wala. Pag may and nakita she is sa, now uh, from Ikea. With Ikea. Ikea. Yes. Ayan, Hello, so, Miss Kat. Hi, Ma'am Kat. Kat my, the, the cat hero. <laughs> Ayan, hi, Ma'am Kat. <laughs> okay, so introduce natin ito. Miss Irish, last year, na-interview ko siya during our HR Congress, Philippine HR Congress. Isa siya sa mga international speakers. And uh, it's an honor to see him again, though virtually, this is the second best thing. He is the best-selling motivational author of Beyond Survival, 
and international keynote speaker. He's also a multi-awarded talent, talent developer and senior executive coach, startup founder and investor with more than 30 years of experience as global learning innovator and transformation leadership expert. He is an HR industry icon who has won several prestigious awards, including the most outstanding contribution to HR industry from HRM Singapore and leading HR professional from the Singapore Human Resources Institute. He manages several pioneering education ventures, including founder and CEO of Global Learning Solutions, MindChamps, International Preschools, Smarter Robotics, and the School of Agility, Grit, and Entrepreneurship, or SAGE. Everyone, let's all hear it from, uh, for Mr. Ro Roger Colliantes Palapakan. Hello, Sir Roger. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, how well, how are you? I'm very excited to team up with you. Nice Thank to you. see you again, sir, after Same almost here. one year. Yes. And the robot natin? And dito, kaya lang, medyo, ano siya, stay at home. Stay at home, ayan. Uh, so, Excited na kami, Sir Roger. Uh, so am I, so am I. So, how do we do it? You let, let, Let's start with the screen sharing first. Yes? yes, so what will happen, sir, is I will give you the platform, the center mm. stage, the limelight, mag-fade out ako sa FB Live. Mm. Although dito sa Zoom, medyo nakikita pa rin ako. But it's always you who they will see. Ano ah. po? Okay. So I'm going to miss you for a while, right? Yes, but I'll be the wind beneath your wings. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's fine. It's cool. Let's do it. Let's do it, yes. sir. All right. So good afternoon. Um, those of you who are uh, signed up here right now, uh, attending the Arriba webinar, and those of you who are on Facebook, uh, this is going to be a great time, I promise you. I have one hour, and I have lots of messages for you. Because just like you, I am stuck at home and wondering when will the new normal come back. The bad news is there's really no new normal. So the sooner we get that, which is my message, we got to live with the abnormal and that's the new normal. So the topic of my uh, talk today is don't waste a good crisis. That's actually the topic in my book I wrote 12 years ago during the financial crisis. You see that picture. It's called Beyond Survival, How to Thrive Amidst Life's Inevitable Crisis. During that time, which is one other crisis, which is now overtaken by the COVID crisis, I taught the word, the, the word thrive. I actually talked about during that time that Surviving is not the challenge. It's thriving during a crisis. That's what it's all about. So I'd like to start to get to know you, if you don't mind, and uh, Howell will help me on this. I'd like Thank to you, ask sir. you three questions, if you don't mind. Uh, I just want to feel where you are in relation to this COVID pandemic. So here are my questions. First question. Are you optimistic? that the ECQ will be gradually lifted by next month. So all you have to do is say yes or no. I'll give you time. I'm gonna count down five. And then when we reach one, we all log in and vote at the same time. Is that okay? All right, so here we go. So, so far, sir, three yeses and three noes. So far, okay. Mm. Uh, so that means Lilima pa lang ang naka-sign in o <laughs> nag-iisip pa, okay? So, give you more time. Ang bilis na, sir. Ang dami na. Oh, sige. So, ganito oh. ang gagawin natin. How well? I-eyeball mo siya. Bigyan mo mm. ako ng idea kung ilan yung yes na so far. Yung no is okay. If sa yes na tayo. Optimistic ka ba? Uh, I mean, I gotta speak in English, by the way, because we sure, are sir. dreaming global. Have, yes. Yeah. Are you optimistic? Yeah. Let me speak to you. All right. So I think I'm going to count one to five and then we close the voting. All right. So for our participants in Zoom, I'll give you, I'll, we'll give you a minute to answer. Are you optimistic? Yes or no? Ayan. Instead of typing on the chat box, answer the poll question. 
Ayan. For the Facebook Live participants, what we're ha what's happening now is here right at Zoom, in this Zoom room, we are conducting a poll question. Uh, mm -hmm. We're conducting a poll with a question, Optimist, are we optimistic, yes or no? Yeah. Okay, how many seconds left, Sir Jeff? Okay, 68%. Optimistic, but they're just wow. three, and thirty-two percent. Okay, that's good. All right, so let let let's proceed. Second question: Are you hopeful that a new vaccine will be made available? We're praying later next year. Are you hopeful that there will be a solution to this crisis? Okay, the poll question is, the poll question number two is up. You have a minute, participants, answer it now. Hopeful that the new vaccine will be made available later next year, yes or no. Ayan, in the meantime, habang sumasagot sila, Sir Roger, yes. sobrang excited ako na marinig yung mga ituturo mo sa amin. I'm going to have a great time together, Howell, together with our Facebook Live friends over there. And oh, sir. Okay, how many? 92% hopeful. There Eight. you go. Galing. Galing. All right. Mm. Then, one last question. One last question. The last question is this. Are you somehow concerned that maybe a second wave of coronavirus, coronavirus or COVID-20 maybe, mm -hmm. will come and spread it's fear again by year end. So are you concerned that might happen? A okay. second way will come? I leave it to Howard. Poll question number three is up. You have a minute. Are you concerned? May COVID-20 ba? May second wave ba? By the end of the year? Yes or no? Ang ganda ng mga tanong natin. We have very interesting and re relevant questions. And we thank our Zoom participants for their active and engaging part participation. While we are monitoring the Facebook Live, we're also seeing people saying yes, 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 yes. And some are saying no. So Roger, 87%, mm. they are concerned. Yeah. 13%, uh, they're not concerned. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Howell and Jeffrey. Okay, what, what is this survey all about? This is called a sentiment analysis. It tells us where in what spectrum of feelings you are. So the good news is we are on the hopeful, 92%, which means it can happen and we really know we can feel it. Uh, it will just come around. So that's good. There's a sense of hope, but the sense of Optimism is lesser, that maybe it will take a little while, so we're actually managing our expectations. So it's not optimistic that we'll be slowly go back to the new normal or the new abnormal. But there's a bit of a concern that maybe this is not over. And I can feel you because I have the same concern. So while we're hopeful that we can fix this one, guess what? We have to be ready that there's another one. So here's my question. If number three happens, did you learn from number two? Okay, so today that's going to be my question. My question is, this COVID lockdown should have given us all the strength to face life again with a lot of optimism, a lot of resilience, and a lot of confidence that we are better because of it. And the topic I mentioned is don't waste a good crisis. So at the end of the day, I want to ask you, is this a wasted crisis? It's a good crisis. Because I tell you, if this is the first crisis you ever have in your life, those of you who are millennial listening to me, this is the biggest crisis I have seen in my life. And if you have seen it, this is probably one of the top most. And if you survive and then thrive, then I think you won the battle. So let me start with the book that I wrote. 
uh, way back in 2008, I said, we live in extraordinary times. During that time, the problem was even controllable. It's not a pandemic. It's a financial crisis. The ones who got hit were mostly bankers, though invested, because there was spillover effect. But it's not like today. When we live in extraordinary times during that time, I already proposed, we need to learn new mindset and new coping skills. And the same thing I learned 2008 is the same thing I'm learning today. We must learn to thrive, not just survive in crisis. So what does that really mean? Well, first, I want you to welcome yourself to the COVID world, okay? Uh, this one sounds weird, but I want to tell you, you got to embrace this COVID and say, okay, give it to me because I'm going to learn from you, okay? This COVID world is the world we will live in even after COVID. So what are they? C-O-V-I-D. That's my own concoction, okay? If you can live in a world that's chaotic, out of control, volatile, indifferent, and debilitating, and you survive it, you can become a thriver. So let me explain. First, it's a chaotic world. It's called a global pandemic. What that means is it's an epidemic that is span across global. And the conclusion, no one is spared. Whether you're the boss or the employee, you're rich or poor, we're all the same. And I'll explain to you why we're all the same. Equalize. Unlike previous uh, uh, crisis, it affects some people, not other people. This one, no one is spared. I don't know of anyone who says, oh, I'm spared, I'm immune. No, no, nobody, all of us. Number two, it's out of control. For example, things we take for granted are slowly taken away. For example, you know, going out, having social lunch uh, and having dinner with your family, that's normal, right? But now it's not normal going to church, going to your synagogue, praying. That used to be something that, oh, I do that uh, regularly. But now we cannot do that. There are many things that were slowly taken away, not taken away in a sense, but temporarily, you know, uh, 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 put aside because of this COVID. So it's something different, isn't it? Uh, it used to be you can go to the beach, it's summer, but you cannot, so you have to pretend you are in a beach. Uh, number three, the crisis is so unpredictable and unprecedented, nobody was prepared for this. So I wasn't prepared for it, all right? I didn't know I will start to work from home. I never thought what that means. If you are a mother who's working from home, you never ask for this, that you're stuck with your kid is also in isolation, and both of you are looking at each other and say, so what do we do? Then you realize having stuck with my kid and having to teach him is, is, is quite difficult. And I'll tell you something also. The kid is also worried. Why am I stuck with my mom? So no one is really, you know, uh, prepared for the, it's volatile. It's, uh, uh, you know, everything we, we, we take for granted are taken away slowly. It's, it's unpredictable, unprecedented. I mentioned that now already, okay? Uh, anything you know before don't work anymore. For example, before we were told, you don't have to wear mask. And then before you know it, we are told you have to wear mask, even if you're not sick. There are many things that we did not know about this, uh, this uh, virus that were now beginning to unfold slowly. Before, we thought if you are sick with the virus, you are visible. I could see you, you're sneezing, you have a headache. Uh, I, I could see you have sore throat. But now, you don't have to have the symptoms, but you can still be sick. So it's like, oh, I didn't know that. So I got a problem. Because there are many people I talked to, I didn't know that they were sick. So the whole thing is really rough and tumble. So if you're still with me and you're saying, yeah, that's true, and I, I, I survived that, then I tell you this is the good news. Uh, we are equal in our helplessness. We are all helpless at the same time. And finally, our response options are very limited. So your option and my option, limited. I don't even question it. If you want to flatten the curve, what is the, what, what is the, the conclusion? 
stay at home. And then I go, why? Because you will save lives, especially your family. Okay, are there any other options? None. Just stay there. So this is the world we live in. So the question now is, how did we go through this? It's now seven weeks. So I ask you, if you're still sane after seven weeks and you're still around, congratulations, okay? If you're still here listening to my talk and attending this, I have good news for you. You're still alive. You're not in heaven. This is still earth. That's good news already. And here's the good news. Thanks to COVID, we all became scientists. We became Dr. Anthony Fauci. Okay, so the good news is everybody talks like an epidemiologist, you know? God suddenly say, pare lockdown. Hey, practice social distancing, man. And let's flatten the curve. Before I never heard those words. I'll tell you why. Lockdown is a prison term. Lockdown means, okay, you are put in prison, you're locked down, so that we'll prevent a, a prison riot. And now that means I'm in lockdown, that's exactly how you should feel. You're stuck in your cell, you stay at home, don't move. Number two, some people, like Philippines, we make it sound better. Community quarantine. Okay. In, in, in the local dialect, we are in prison together. It's so nice, right? It's so nice. So it sounds better. You don't feel like I'm on a strict order. And in Malaysia, it's called movement control order. They're very precise. Don't move. We're controlling it. Of course, you know the results, right? In Malaysia, they opened already last Monday. In Philippines, we're still community quarantine. All right. Then the other word, social distancing. Do you know that social distancing is an oxymoron? There are two words that don't belong to each other. You know, when you say social, that means intimate, right? How can you be social when you're not near each other? Then suddenly you heard this word, social distancing. As do we know it, when I heard it the first time, it's like, I can't, I can't put my heart around it. Social, that was distance very far. How? And then we say, okay, we change it. We make it better. Self-quarantine. Ah, okay, that one I understand. That means I stuck with myself. Okay, fine. <laughs> in the U.S., they call it shelter in place. Again, this is a concept when there is an air, air raid, you know, bombing and so on. You know, during the war, you stay at your shelter and stay in a place. You don't even move. Okay, that's almost how I feel. And of course, the nice word that I learned uh, during COVID is work from home. Uh, I mean, that's another oxymoron. When I'm at home, I don't work. But now I work at home, and home is work. Guess what? How many of you, you can raise your hand if you want. How many of you feel like work from home means more work and less home? You know, I, I can assure you, Howell has been doing busy, you know, doing all this webinar. He, he, you couldn't have been busier today, right? So agree, that, agree. Yeah, that is good news, right? I mean, we learned something new, but here's the good news. If you can suffer this together with the rest of mankind, we have a shared perspective. We know what it means. So we need to learn how to go over this together. Oh, this is my favorite. Now I'm an epidemiologist. <laughs> I, I'm like a, a scientist. I want to be, one day, most people would like to be a Scientists like Dr. Anthony Fauci, flattening the curve. I didn't know P PUI, PMU. I thought these were bad words before, you know? <laughs> and right now, you say, hey, PUI. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> PMU, you know? Uh, it's like, okay, you know what I mean? Then triage. Triage is a nice word I heard. Triage is simply means that it's a hospital term that means we determine who will be given uh, treatment first than the others. So we have priority. PPE, wow, uh, that's another word. Now, actually it means mask. Why do they have to call it PPE? Oh, it sounds better. Ventilators, okay, uh, that's a big, big thing. Oh, this one is my favorite. I'm now a social scientist. I can now say, if there's a virus, you have to TTI. First, you got to test, you have to trace, you have to isolate. Wow, so nice. And then you have to count mortality, recovery, antibody, you know? And that's why you say, okay, 
uh, the bad news about Philippines, ha? our mortality rate is higher than most Asian countries. Ha? Our recovery is low. So, medyo may challenge, di ba? Oh, this is my favorite. Convalescent plasma. Oh, I thought convalescent plasma is a new television, huh? <laughs> okay, with nicer color, huh? No, it's the blood, the blood, the blood of those who survive. And then we talk about vaccine. So again, some of you are hopeful we are are. Thank you. And now we have an antiviral medicine. It's called Remdesivir. So now another word. Oh, of course, my favorite, thanks to uh, Donald Trump, you know, hydroxychloroquine. I tell you, you must use it because it's not tested, but I like it. First, it sounds very good and it's a long name. It must be good. All right, that's me. All right. So this is the good news, right? I'm making fun of it, but you know what? Even COVID has become a source of fun for me. How about this? I'll give you three. First, what are the seven days of the week, Howell, during quarantine period? Okay. No more Monday to Sunday. It's now this day, that day, the other day, yesterday, today, next day, someday. Every day is just like the other day. That is a fun way to describe because sometimes I don't even ask, what day is it today? Before, huh? I look forward to Sunday or Saturday, right? Now I realize, so today is Saturday. Yeah, but how come it feels like the other day? Because there's no more weekend. Hello, you're on total weekend, just like me. I would say that's one of the fun part, you know? I've always said, I wish I spend more time at home. Now, I wish the Lord did not hear me because now I really have no choice, okay? As some of us say, one day I'm going to rest. I'm going to have a holiday. Now you can have all the holiday at home. Second, some of, this one is even funnier. What are the three choices you have during lockdown? Very simple. Government, you stay at home. If you don't, you stay in the hospital. If you don't, you stay in a memorial park. You only have three choices. Either you stay, you get sick, or you die. And there's an even funnier one. And uh, this is not a political statement, but this is true. I just found out. Search the word idiot in Google. Click images, those of you have a phone. Whose picture appears on top? Mm. I can assure you it's not Howell's. I'll try it now, sir. Huh? So again, I'll, everyone, I'll type, yeah. Okay, everybody type idiot, uh, idiot in then, Google search. Uh, Google, then click images. Click images. Uh, whose picture appears on top? <laughs> okay, no, no, this is just... This is nothing political. So unfortunately, you know, uh, somebody political is out there. And uh, uh, Sundai Pichai was asked, how come this guy's uh, you know, picture appears? He said, yeah. it's, it's the algorithm of our system. Okay. Out of three trillion searches, this is the one that comes on top. Nobody put that there. So, so it's, it's scary, right? So what I'm saying is, chill out, chill out, chill out. Yeah. This is not serious. I don't even want you to take this joke seriously because I just pick it out in the internet. The this is the exact the... image, sir, that yeah, I see. Exactly. I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Okay, so be careful, Howell. You <laughs> might be number two. Okay? <laughs> oh, okay. no, Lord. <laughs> okay, so, help us. All right, so now, what is crisis then? Okay, here's where I switch now. Okay, I, I want to be serious and, and share with you this, that this time is the best time to learn unlearn and relearn. You know, Alvin Toffler, who's a futurist, said the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write. Wala na yon. The illiterate are those who cannot learn new things, cannot unlearn old things, and cannot relearn again. Okay, so First, in the COVID, there are many things we're learning. Remember, I told you, you're now scientific, you know, no exponential, you know. But you have to unlearn many things also. This whole idea that, no, I can try it. I can test whether it's really true. What's wrong? I want to go out. I want to go to the beach. Who can stop me? It's my freedom. Okay, go, go, go. It's okay. Anyway, it's your life at stake, you know. So you can, you, you may refuse to unlearn. 
But the thing is, we got to relearn. So this is where I will help you. I think you got to relearn some 15 things that I prepared for you. So there are 15 things I suggest we learn during this pandemic. Okay? These are my thoughts. These are the ones I wrote in my book. And it's free for you to apply. All right? So at the end of today, you will learn five things. And I hope you share it with those who are not on Facebook, those who didn't attend it. Okay? Uh, be part of your new learning. All right, first, I'll share with you three hard realities of crisis. Meaning, you got to have this attitude, okay? These are hard realities, but the sooner you accept it, any crisis, you'll just say, come on, give it to me. I know that. I learned from Roger. I have this hard realities. Number three. Number two, you need to learn four fatal mind traps. Four. That can make you think like a loser. That's the one I want you to avoid. The first one, you embrace. The fourth one, you set aside. You unlearn that. And then you learn new things. Two essential mindsets you need today to be able to recover and rebound anytime. Whether it's financial crisis, physical crisis, divorce, health crisis, you can apply the same thing. Two mindsets. So if I am successful in sharing these two with you, I can assure you it will change the way you look at life. Number four, I want to share with you a technique. I developed this it's called the flip side technique. Anytime you see a crisis, you flip it, flip it. Meaning you play with your mind because your mind is playing with you. Mm -hmm. When you see a reality, you, you must learn to say, ah, GPS, that means, okay, good news, bad news. Oh, blessing in disguise. So you, you actually change the way you look at things. And once you learn it, you flip it, you're good. You're good to go. Then I'm going to give you three principles from my book, which I want you to remember, and more important, I want you to share, especially with your loved one. Because that's really the reason why you're working very hard to stay at home, right? So what I suggest you do after this session, you give a lecture to your family, no? <laughs> okay? Because if you learn it and you just give it to yourself, I think useless. All right? So I'm going to try. All right? So get ready. Nothing to memorize. Just listen and feel it. Anything that you can remember out of the 15 is good enough. All right. So let's start. First thing, embrace the reality of crisis. There are three things you must do. I call it the triple A. When there's a crisis like a pandemic, three things. Stay awake. Stay alert, stay alive. All right. I think you could already sense what that means, right? Stay awake means you got to know as much as you can know. Don't just float around and say, oh, this will go away. I don't know what this is, but this will go away. Oh, don't worry. In, by July, this will all disappear, magically disappear. No, 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 no. no. They will not magically disappear. You got to know as much as you can about that crisis. Why is that important? So you remove away the fake from the real. You remove the fear from the truth. You got to be like Dr. Fauci. Know as much as you can. Let the facts dictate. Number two, when you are awake, you also have to stay alert. Stay alert means what if he doesn't know what I know is possible? So right now, I'm in Singapore, okay? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's by choice because I happen to live here. So I'm, I'm here, but I'm very alert here because when I was in the Philippines, my antenna are out. I assume everybody has, has it because who knows who is asymptomatic from that? I cannot ask Howell, uh, Howell, are you sure? You, do you think you might be asymptomatic, which means you are sick, but you don't know? You say, how would I know? Would know? And then you can ask me the same question. So it's better for us to assume that he is and I am. Then we're both safe, right? Yes. That's called stay alert. Okay. So when they say one meter, I think you should start learning what meter, one meter is all about. And you can sense it. You know? Once you go back to work, you will notice your, this sense of distance will come out. You don't even say, excuse me, you're not one meter, you go away. You, you, you can sense. So you have to assume everybody has it, 
then you social distance, you wash your hands, you do whatever is necessary. And number three is most important. You got to make sure in a crisis, you have commitment to yourself. I'm going to be alive after this. Yeah, it's scary, but I will be alive. I made the decision. When this is over, I'm still alive. And what do I do? I avoid doing stupid things, okay? which is against what I know and which is against my assumption about where that crisis is. So, you know, now that you know that, you're not gonna, you're not gonna play with quarantine and say, anyway, nobody will know. So I'll sleep at night, I'll meet some of my friends, have a, you know, some beer, who will never know? You know, we'll play a little game here and there. Don't do that, because that will not keep you awake. So here's the three rules, therefore, very simple. Stay awake, stay alert, stay alive. Keep telling yourself, okay, I'm awake, I'm alert, and I'm gonna be alive. When you have that, you have what's called agility built into your system, okay? You, you don't take your chances, but you're also not afraid because you are awake, alert, alive. Okay, so that's my first lesson or sharing with you today. Second, what is a crisis, okay? Let's look at crisis first before we can go to how do we fix that. Uh, John F. Kennedy said, uh, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger, the first one, way, and then the other one represents opportunity, C, way, T. So that means danger in, in rap or with opportunity. So a danger, I'm oh, sorry, a crisis has danger involved, but there's also an opportunity. So here's the question. What do you focus on, the danger or the opportunity? Ah, that is the most important thing. Sometimes we are so focused on the danger, we miss the opportunity. And so that's why we say, if that is the case, by the way, the two words, similar words, Wei Qi and Xuan Qi uh, means the same, okay? But it means differently to the way it sounds. One is Pinyin and one is, you know, I, I would say the, 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 the Mandarin Chinese. So danger and opportunity. So let's talk about COVID. If you look at COVID as a crisis, here are the dangers. And some of this you have to sacrifice, huh? Because of COVID, lack of movement. Okay. Accept it, embrace it, that's the fact. Flattening the curve, don't even question it. Just, just follow. If the government say ECQ is extended, just extend it. Uh, they're not doing it because they want to feel good. No, 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 no. Don't even question it. Lack of socialization, don't worry. When it's back, we will still be with our friends. They will still be there, okay? I suggest you focus your socialization with your family, you know? You are already stuck with your family and then you even get apart because you lose control, you lose your emotion. The first socialization is family. If there's anything to fix and you'll fix it today, COVID was good for you. If your family became closer, closely knit, thank God. Okay, so you've turned it into an opportunity. Increase stress level, there will be. Increase uncertainty about the future. Will I lose my job? Uh, my company is not a global company, you know. So how long can the owners put in money to keep me afloat. Hmm, that's a real danger. Loss of security. Because of ECQ, all bets are off. My boss don't have to go to HR and say, I'm giving you 30 days. No, sorry. Emergency means uh, uh, we are temporarily closed. Uh, come back when, when okay. Uh, our Chinese restaurant just closed yesterday with a simple note. I'm sorry, we cannot contain it anymore. Consider yourself, you know, for law for life. You know? Loss of meaning, uh, that would be the worst. When you feel like, what is life after this? I wanna flip that because that danger, we know that, we've gone through that. I want to focus more on the opportunity. Uh, COVID enables people like you and me to establish more meaningful relationships. I tell you something, because of COVID, 
I'm now in touch with people like Ariba, my, my, my friends in school, my teammate. You know, it, it's so easy thanks to Zoom. Before Zoom, bro, when you say, let's Zoom, Zoom what? You know, now everybody say, okay, how well, Zoom you later. Instead <laughs> of see you later, Zoom you later. Instead of saying, let's meet, you don't even say that. One day when you go back, you're not going to tell me, Roger, let's meet tomorrow. You just say, let's Zoom tomorrow. Because now you realize Zoom is more effective, right? Because I don't need to travel, I don't need to be stuck, and I don't have to use the excuse, sorry, I was late trafficking. <laughs> and then I ask you, how long you've been living in the Philippines? <laughs> oh, really? Good. Okay. Number two, greater awareness of inner strength. You know, this is the most interesting part. I've, I've experienced it during the financial crisis. I lost half of my network. And, and I realized if I po- focus all the things about gaining back what I lost, I've lost twice. I lost my network. I lost my self-worth. Then I realized it's no use agonizing over this. Anything you lost is lost, period. If you say, okay, in one year you recover 30% of what you lost, good luck. After two years, 50, good luck. After three years, 100, you are the best. But anything below three years, you won't recover. So forget it. The house you're supposed to have, the car you're supposed to have, forget it. Okay? Just focus on your inner strength. And here's the most important thing, number three. Because of crisis, during financial crisis and now, I realized the value of life. Now I realized I was so paranoid that like I'm vulnerable. Uh, they call me vulnerable population. So I said, I'm glad I took care of my health because I'm not, you know, uh, I, I, I'm so vulnerable, life might be snapped out of me, you know? I've been paid all my bills, then done, you know? No, no, I need to pay all my bills first, okay? So appreciation of the value of life. So here's a question I have for you. Do you enjoy your life more now? After COVID, consider yourself second least on life. If people during World War have, have, have the story about I survived the war, you survived COVID. I think we should all be wearing a red, you know, a medal that says survivor. Mm-hmm. Okay? How? Staying at home, pare. I just stayed at home. I am a survivor. Number four is more important. Actually, even if we're not allowed to go to church, I realize some people have developed even a deeper sense of spiritual value. You know why? Because there's no ritual to follow. You know, we always say, oh, I don't have time for God. Yeah, now you have. He's 24 by 7. Why don't you call him? You know, so deep sense of spiritual value that comes from value of life, right? And the best part, gives you new opportunities and choices. Maybe you start thinking now. Maybe it's not good just to rely on one job. You know? Maybe I should consider doing something extra. So many, many of my friends are now starting small businesses, no? Because they realize, hmm, mahirap pala to. I mean, in English, oh, this is tough. I cannot just rely on one job. Okay, so if you got me so far where I am, okay, here are the things you must avoid. So because you have seen the danger and opportunity, if you focus on the danger, you might fall into this trap. I call it the four Fatal traps. Okay, the first one, when there is a crisis, the first thing that will attack you is a sense of helplessness. Remember I said we are all equal in that helplessness? And I don't know how many of you said this, I can't do anything about this. The answer is yes. But the question is this, what can you do given the situation that's within your control? This is very important. Within my control, or oh, simple, take care of my health, uh, protect my family, okay, be spare with my money, eat healthily, do some exercise. So you're not helpless, to be honest. You just have a choice problem. Second, when you have become helpless, you fall into the second one. Be careful, huh? Second one is worse than this. Blame fixing. Blame fixing is, have you caught yourself doing this? Uh, who? 
the hell said anyway that there should be an ECQ? How come I wasn't consulted? You know, ECQ, who said it's going to be six weeks? I don't care. It. And my barangay captain, you know, he doesn't even know what he's doing. You know, he says uh, quarantine, but they don't even have tools that oh, you began fi you know, fixing, you know. How can we help ourselves? We don't have testing. Oh, okay, okay. It's so many, many people, huh? 50% of their time wasted blame fixing, huh? All right. It's like, so who do we blame now? This government, that government, the LGU. Okay, fine. I have a business where I told them, don't, 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 don't blame fix. Do something. So we came up with a project, uh, one of my startup. We, we said that, what's the problem? The LGU, they keep blame, right? Why? Because they don't have tools to monitor quarantine, you know, uh, 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 how do you call that, a curfew. Huh? So what we did is this. We told them, we're going to fix it. We're going to give you a monitoring system that will enable you to attach all your CCTV camera to a control center, and you could see how many people are in and every circle that we can, we can identify. So if there are more than 10, that's the place you go and check. So we did something instead of Fix, uh, blaming the LGU, we gave them a tool to do their job. Number three, when you're blame fixing, you're more naturally going to fall in the third part. This is already third level. It's called catastrophizing. That's a big word. Simple, simple meaning is this. You feel that the catastrophe is just waiting to happen. Just like what you watch in the movie. Parang annihilation. So you have this feeling that the world is coming to an end. And maybe before the ECQ is over, it's going to come to me. Okay. I think you should avoid that by all costs because that is not going to help you. It, it will lead you to the fourth one. And when you're on the fourth level, you're almost in the spectrum called the uh, depression. What is that? hopelessness, the feeling that I'm doomed. I'm vulnerable. I'm just waiting to get it. So since I'm going to get it anyway, I'm going to go out there <laughs> and get it and see. That's stupid, obviously, but this is the danger. So here's my suggestion. Once you feel number one, helpless, quickly turn around and say no. And this is what I'm going to share with you. Okay. Agility is the ability to say, I can do something about it. I can do something about my activity. I can do something about saving money. I can do something about teaching my child at home. I'm not helpless. Because once you stop it there, the loser cycle will stop. All right, now, if some of you are listening to me and say, sorry, Roger, you should have told me this long time ago. I'm already in number three. Yeah, you know? uh, so I say, okay, okay, go back, go back, go back, Naya, go back, go back, go back, okay. So these are the fatal flaws. Okay, so let me now share with you the solution. So let's let's talk about two essential mindsets. So this is the third piece of my message to you today. You only have to master two: agility plus grit. I'm sure you have heard those words before. If I did the survey, how many of you heard agility? Uh, everyone, heard grit. Okay, fine. But what does that mean in COVID, in crisis? Okay, let me share with you. First, agility is a mindset. This is what I call in my book, don't waste a good crisis. Okay, uh, if you're a Catholic, you've heard about Good Friday. Sometimes you worry, why is it that good? Well, you know the answer, right? Because after the Good Friday is resurrection, right? So that's exactly what crisis is. It's good. It can only make you better. Don't run away from it. And the good news is you can't run anyway. So you're stuck with me. We're stuck with each other. So what do we do? Okay, here it is. Let me explain what I mean. And I hope you think about it and give it a chance. Agility is that belief you have in your mind. You're in control of your own destiny. You can become the best version of yourself, even in the worst time of your life. Let that sink in. 
I, that's a very simple definition for me. Your belief that you are in control of your destiny. You can do what you can do. You can get out of this alive and you can make a whole new life out of this. Number two, you can even be the best version of yourself if you switch from danger to opportunity in the worst time of your life. Do you realize that this is the most important lesson you need to learn in life? And if you have a chance, I suggest you teach this to your kids. You know, I run a preschool. We teach our kids to use this situation now as an opportunity to be agile. You can actually teach kids the same thing I'm teaching you. That, anak, I you not into? Uh, 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 sorry, uh, forgive me, my son. Uh, I really don't know how to teach you now because I wasn't prepared for this, but if you help me, you cooperate. We can make it happen, you know? So this kid doesn't have to be the worst of time. So son, let's not quarrel, okay? You help me, I'll help you. The belief that we can control it, that's what agility is all about. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I switch a little. Agility has four parts. And I'll share with you what you can do every day to develop your agility muscles. There are four, huh? physical agility, mental agility, emotional agility, social agility. During COVID, you can learn that. So let me share with you. There's a behavioral background to this, just even a scientific. Okay. Our body, physical, especially during COVID, you know, just sit down, watch Netflix, you know, uh, the only thing that you can develop are your fingers, you know? You know? So not, not, not good. So you got to make sure you're physically agile even during COVID stay at home. So how do you do that? You have to believe that there are four energy, there are four hormones you need to develop. Dopamine is called the energy hormone. It's the one that pumps into your body, okay, when you do something physical. If you're an athlete or you go to a, a gym every regularly, the, the feeling you have when you, after, Exercise, you feel like, good, that's dopamine. Of course, if you are, uh, you know, like me, who we'll stay most of the time in the gym, uh, the only dopamine, you know, you know, is this. That's <laughs> not dopamine, okay? Dopamine is the inner energy. So here's what I suggest. Every hour, do something physical. If you're at home, stand up, walk, go to the, go to the balcony, okay? Uh, go to the kitchen, to the bedroom, run, you know, back and forth. Just do something physical. Don't watch Netflix for one hour doing nothing because your body will really get used to it. Why? Because according to medical uh, science, physical activity regularly allows your heart, lungs, and brains to pump. You know that, right? So that when you're able to do that every hour, you are able to, to respond to stressful situations. That's why many of you are saying, oh, I wish I could go to the gym because I'm really, really feeling lethargic, yeah? yeah. But you must fight that, okay? If, if you can, just, just go up and down the stairs. I don't know what you can do, but do something physical. If you want, go and do your webinar and your, 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 your talk with people by walking. Hi, Howell. How are you today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good. Uh, uh, excuse me, Howell. Why are you, you know, you, you, you kind of, you know, you, 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 you kind of, you're running. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because when I'm talking to you, I'm jogging, man. Okay. Sorry. You caught me on my 60 minute, you know, break. You must do that. Promise me you will. Because I can tell you, it increases your agility. Second, mental agility. Very important. During lockdown, okay, if you start doing only things that you like to do, but there's no mental challenge, you're going to wake up. Your serotonin, your attention hormone, is going to go down. So you must do any repetitive mental challenge each day. That's the reason why if you have an apps and you're playing uh, whatever, uh, Candy Crush, if your mom is playing Candy Crush, let her do it. Because that's a lot of mental agility, no? Crossword puzzle. You know, if you have a kid who likes Mobile Legend, let him do it. You know? Because he's focused. Mental, repetitive. 
you know what will happen? His serotonin levels going up. So later on, he can uh, face any mental challenges. What, that, what it does medically is when you do that, repetitive challenge every day, it will improve your willpower. You will try to finish what you have to do. You don't jump from one to the other. It's called focus. Uh, in, science, in our, in our uh, language, we call it intentionality, you know? Focus on what you gotta do. So if you're, you're a working mom, say to yourself, I'm gonna focus on washing clothes, ironing, <laughs> and I'm just gonna focus, you know? I don't quarrel with my kid. There's a time for everything. Okay, so son, get out. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> this is not the time to quarrel, mom. You know, <laughs> I'm doing my mental agility as Roger suggested. Okay, all right. Number three, I suggest you develop your emotional agility. Okay, uh, it's called endorphin, right? So we call it the happiness hormone. Here's what you need to do during COVID. You must think of something that when you think about it, it makes you feel good. Okay, this is the time to reminisce. You know, think of the beach with the family, you know, somewhere. Talk about it. Makes you feel good. Look at the pictures. Okay, many of you have 2,000 pictures in your phone. When was the last time you saw 10% of those pictures? Look back. Now, for me, uh, this is very personal, but if I'm feeling not so good, I just look at our wedding picture with my wife, you know, in, uh, in uh, Tagaytay, and I already feel like, mm -hmm, feel good already, you know, all right? But you must do it consciously. Do not think that during COVID, emotional agility is by the side. You must experience positive emotion each day. So here's my challenge for you, huh? At the end of the day, think of something that will make you feel good, so before you sleep, you put a smile on your face, you know? Oh, I wish we can go back to Santorini, you know? Ah, that beautiful white place, you know? Oh, make it local. I wish we can go to Baguio. I can smell the pine, you know? It's like, ah, oh, and then sleep. Don't be like this. Oh my God, what a, what a useless day. I did nothing today. And tomorrow I still do nothing, you know. You got to develop that agility, emotional. Finally, I like to suggest you must develop your social agility. Okay, what's that? Oxytocin. Now, this is the hormone that you have the least during COVID because of social distancing. Okay? Your relationship hormone in your blood has now dried out. Okay? But do you realize that when you reach out to somebody in normal times, your oxytocin level go up, your sense of trust in people, your sense of vulnerability, your ability to be transparent, your ability to love, to have intimacy, feel really empathy, very high. But you know what? During COVID, you must watch out because this might go down, you know, because you get depressed. Remember, I told you, get helpless. When you don't have all this agility built in, you know, you're not pumping in all this hormone, oh, you're really going to feel meaningless. So here's what I suggest you do. Zoom. Reach out to as many people as you can during this, this opportunity. Example, how many of you still get in touch with your uh, office mate? How many of you have done this? How many of you, and this one I like because Rina just did that uh, last week. Rina is my wife, Rina, you know. You know, she did a uh, uh, alumni homecoming <laughs> of her classmates in high school, you know. And they could not do it before. But now they realize it's so simple, no? You know, how much you are, you know. Uh, it, it's so awesome, okay. So right, right, right now, I, I really miss Ariba. Now I see Howell, I feel like, oh man, Howell, you're looking good. You're still there, man. And, you too, sir, you too. Yeah, man, <laughs> you so we're really developing our oxytocin. So here's my suggestion, therefore. Be agile means, okay, you gotta reach out physically, mentally, emotionally, socially. That's the practical way I can share with you. 
Agility is not this so theoretical concept that you have to be opportunity and quickly. No, 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 you just develop it. And I tell you, you will thank COVID because you develop these four muscles when you least expect them. You wanna hear the second mindset? Okay, I'll share with you. Second mindset is grit. Grit, grit, the word grit itself already explains it. It's not grit, it's not grit, it's grit. The way you sound, you already know, right? Mm -hmm. Grit means that conviction, conviction that I can thrive and survive under any adverse condition in spite of drawbacks, setbacks, or failure. That's grit, you know? Uh, many people talk about this now, but I like to make it simple. It's your never say die attitude. And in my book, I call it the get better, not bitter attitude. Simply lang. You don't have time to be bitter about life. Just get better. When I say move on, I really move on. Because if you're bitter, you stay in the past. And you know, when you stay in the past, you don't move, right? So get better means, all right, this is the way I go. I'm going to go this way and I will leave the past. That's exactly what I suggest you do. That belief that I can be better. So my challenge to you is at the end of COVID, were you a better person than you were before it came? 20 years from now when your child talks to you and say, Dad, were you there during COVID? I just read it, you know, over the internet. Yes, son. And he asked me, what did you do during COVID? What's my answer? I ran away. I was depressed. Ah, I really, or I say, you know, son, I'll tell you this. I actually thought I will not make it. If I did not make it, you would not have been today, my son. You know what? I attended that course. And he taught me, get better, not bitter. So I want you to remember that, son. When it's your turn to experience what I did, remember this. Don't cry. Get better, not bitter. That's my lesson for you. That's what I learned during the war. The war with COVID. That's the way you should say it. So here's what I want to share with you. Techniques. All right. So this is. Again, in my book, and I love it because I've been practicing it. If you tell me the good news is you lost money, I always say, okay, let me find the good news. <laughs> okay. So the good news is looking at the downside and then looking at the upside. Why? Your brain tends to concentrate on the bad news. The bad news is you cannot go out, correct? You flip it immediately, your brain will tell you. Bad news, bad news, can't go out, no social, social. No, no, I, I, I flip it. I said, the good news is now I have time for my family. Ah. Yeah, bad news is I have to be socially distant. But the good news is I learned how to use Zoom. <laughs> okay? And now I learned how to order food via Grab. Ah, now I can use my phone. I can choose the menu. I never do that before. So the good news is I'm stuck at home. There's not a lot to do, but I have become digital. I have more time with my family. I'm practicing what Roger told me, all this agility muscles. This is the good news. So if you ask me, is it such a bad deal to be in, in, in quarantine? No, not for me anyway, because I'm busy. I'm busy looking at the good news. Second. All right, second technique. So if you can practice this, anytime somebody tells you, okay, sorry, huh? I just heard your boyfriend, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, left you. Oh, I know, that's the bad news. The good news, I can now upgrade. Ah, so you, you always look at the upside, you know? So there's always a good side. Of course, that was a joke, but the point is, anything you hear bad, convert it to new, good. Second, very important. Blessing in disguise. This is the most important lesson I learned during the financial uh, crisis. I'm a banker, a uh, senior banker. Uh, 
over in Asia. I used to be paid good money. I used to be. Okay? Until the crisis came, which I did not expect. Okay? So the bad news is I lost, as I told you. And then I would have a choice. I would have a choice to, to feel bad. Why, Lord, did you do this? You know, I'm about to retire. Why did you not wait for my retirement? You know? So then I realized that every time there's a crisis, there's a blessing behind it. Remember the, the way, see, there's a problem, but there's an opportunity. The blessing in disguise is because of COVID, it's teaching us a lot of things. Number one, appreciate your blessing that you're alive, that you have a family, that's the blessing already. So the Lord is just teaching you, I'm keeping you staying at home to learn two things. One, you have a family, you have a home, and you're alive. How many of us are even grateful that unlike some people, we don't even have a home to stay? Isn't that a blessing? Sometimes you don't realize that this COVID makes you realize how blessed you are. How blessed you are. How blessed you are. How many people have jobs? How many people have home? If you have any of this and you have a family, you better not complain, man. You are blessed. Number three. I call number three the attitude of gratitude. Again, coming from blessing. If, if number one, number two didn't help you, number three should help you. Think of your life as half full rather than half empty. I'm sure you have heard that concept before. Because sometimes when you look at life, we always look at what I don't have. The attitude of gratitude is being grateful for what you already have. And praying that you're going to get more, that's fine. But Gratitude means contentment with what you have. Doesn't mean you, I don't mean don't work hard. Huh? That, 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 that should not be the, the message you get. The point I'm saying is there's a lot to be grateful for. A lot to be grateful for. You know, I'm a vulnerable uh, population. You know, I have a lot to be grateful for because I took care of my health and I'm grateful because. I have some savings to buy medicine, you know, that keep me, you know, as healthy as I can. That's a lot of gratitude. So if you really look at all these things, it's really teaching you something. Don't complain. You have no reason to complain. The COVID is just God's way of telling you, come on, grow up, man. Grow up. You know? If you don't grow up from this, I really have bad news for you. Any crisis will flip you. If this biggest crisis, you're still standing, you listen to me, and you implement some of the things I told you, I can already assure you, you're the new hero. If you don't learn from this, I have bad news for you. You're a loser. And there's nothing we can do about that. Okay, so let's and on a slight note, so what does that mean? Okay. I always remember what Steve Jobs said, and he was suffering from, from, from uh, pancreatic cancer. He said in a talk to Stanford graduate students, he said, your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. Stay hungry. Stay foolish. Live in the moment. Love every moment. Crisis or no crisis, this is the day you have to live. You have to embrace it and follow the flipping I just told you. I'll share with you a story. I read this book about a nurse in palliative care. And for the, the last 12 weeks of the people in ICU were about to go, just like in COVID. She's been recording 
the regrets of people who are dying. Uh, this was written in 2012, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, her name is Nurse Wave. Okay. And she documented, you know, ask, asking, you know, sir, what would be your wish before you go? I just want to hear you so I can share it with your loved one. And he said, these are the most common, not in any order, I guess, but the first one. And I want you to think about this, and I'm going to slowly do this because I want you to think about your life right now. After COVID, can you say this to yourself? I wish I had lived a life true to myself, not a life that others expected of me. That's really sad because in my coaching experience, executive coach with many executives to begin with, this is what they say. I was so caught up in my role, I forgot that was not the real me. You know what? COVID gives you the time to also realize this. Be true to yourself. All right? Number two, this is for men, especially like me, you know, who work so hard. Oh, well, this is for you. Most males said, I wish I had not worked so hard. Sounds weird, right? No, no, no. I'll explain. Because sometimes it's okay to work hard. But sometimes you don't know you're working too hard that you miss out. Like what? Well, working so hard you forgot you had an anniversary with your wife, right? In there? You work so hard, you did not attend your child's recital. Uh -huh. okay. You work so hard, you're so tired, you don't even talk to people at home. Mm -hmm. did, I, did I say more? Okay, so. Second is spend more time with the people you have because you have no other better choice. Number three, this is very important. Oh my God. I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. You know, in this situation, this is the time to tell your loved ones, I love you. This is the time to say to your wife, I'm sorry. I'm so obnoxious. Now I know. Okay. If, if I will, and now I realize what you say when you say it's very hard to, you can stand me. Because now after staying in with myself for seven months, I also cannot stand myself. <laughs> so I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, son. I didn't know how to handle this. I, I really just break up, my son, because I don't know how to teach you. Express your feelings now. Number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with friends. All right, that one, my advice. Okay, those of you who have Zoom call after my call, just call everybody. Yeah, hi, hi, how well I miss you. <laughs> you know, hi, Iris, hi. Je You've got to do it. Because remember, uh, oxytocin, you need to develop. Your social, ah, that's, and finally, this is the last one, and I will end with my parting message for you. I wish I had let myself be happier. You know, sometimes I realize we are the ones who prevent ourselves from feeling happy because we forgot there's so much to be grateful for. We forgot to count the blessings in disguise. So we, if we feel like we don't have a happy life, so my suggestion, happiness is a choice. Happiness is a state of mind. Now here's what I found out. Happiness is not the car that you drive. Because I haven't driven my car for seven weeks. <laughs> it's not the house I live. You know what? After seven weeks, I feel my house is so small. <laughs> but you know what? I realize because it's so small, it's easy to find my kids and my wife. I don't have to shout, hello, where are you? Are you on the seventh floor? No, I'm beside you. Oh, hi, hello. <laughs> so what I'm saying is happiness is a choice. So my advice for you, be happy today. After my talk, I think it should change your mind altogether. And here's the, my last take. Here are the five things the global pandemic should have taught you. If it hasn't taught you, I'd like to suggest you think about it. Here's my number one learning. You got to be optimistic. Look at the brighter side of life. This is not the end of the world. No use to, to mock, mock, mock 
over you know what's happening today. There's a brighter side. Number two, celebrate the gift of life. You are alive. Every moment you wake up, I want you to say, oh my God, I'm so happy. This is another COVID day. But you know, I have my wife, I have my kids, the sun is up, the clouds are up, and the, the, the energy and the pollution is gone. Oh my God, what a beautiful life. Number three, appreciate your blessing. And more important, your little treasures. Little, little property, you know? You know, like, I have a nice laptop. Okay, it's old, but still working, you know? <laughs> I have good Wi-Fi reception. Little treasures, you know? Uh, most people don't have. And by the way, I can order anything I like now, and I don't have to go out. Like what? If I want kui chow or I want uh, noodles, I just call grub. And I tell them, please drop off. I don't want to see you. No problem. <laughs> it's so beautiful. You know, they just leave it there. Then I pick it up. It's like, wow, little treasures, right? Uh, enjoy simple pleasures. Okay? From now on, I think when you go out after COVID, you won't be looking for a fine dining restaurant. I'm very mm -hmm. sure about that. You'll say, okay, uh, I want to go back to that barbecue store, that, that, <laughs> that in arts, you know, the, I, I want to go back to Mercato, you know, uh, this thing about, you know, eat good, you know, no, no, no. I just want to go back to simple things, you know, and I want to create happy memories now. I'll take more selfies. <laughs> ah, and more important, I look at them because Roger told me, remember? It develops your relationship hormone, remember? Right. And number five, my friends, this is for you, Howard. This is for me. Mm -hmm. Nourish your health. Treasure your family. They are the most important assets. Everything else, accidental. So if you have a loved one who's waiting for you, kids who are looking up to you, you're done. You're okay. And you have a home, Getting smaller, it's okay. So I end up with my little advice in conclusion. My last word, uh, Howard, is this. Remember three principles of thriving. I will make this very slow because I want you to remember. Because after this session, I want you to go back to your friends and say, I learned three things today. Okay, first, don't waste a good crisis. So if you see someone who's wasting away his COVID time, you say, come on, get, get up, you know, good. This crisis, you must learn something here. Let me teach you about agility, you know. Let me teach you about something about grit, you know. Do you realize you can flip everything? Yes, go ahead. So therefore, this is what I call unlearn, unlearn. Unlearn self-limiting beliefs. Number two, get better, not bitter. Learn new empowering mindset. Stay away from the past. It's all gone. There's no, no, no need to pick up what is gone. You know, move on. If there are things in your life that you, you know, dark parts of your life, leave, leave it on. Rewind. You're in a new life, new life list, remember? Okay, so learn new empowering mindset. Number three, and I hope today you learn that. Because that's my message to everyone here. Remember this new phrase. And now it means something when you say it. Thrive, not just survive. Survive, thrive, thrive, not just survive. Which means relearn new transforming habits. Crisis can make you the best version of yourself. Crisis can make you see opportunities you never saw before. Crisis can make you face the next one if you learn something from this. So I'd like to say thank you for the gift of your presence today. I know one of the things you have done is you have actually welcomed us to your home. Uh, I'm sure Howell can see where you're coming from. Some of you are working somewhere. You know, sometimes home is not something we want to share to people, right? I'd like to say thank you because you gave us an opportunity to say part of your home and more important, Thank you for giving us opportunities to see your heart. And I hope 
I was able to touch your heart, just like my heart. And I'd like you to remember this. Live life like it truly matters. Because it does. Thank you. And have a great day. Bravo, bravo, Sir Roger Coliantes. Ayan. Thank you. You know what, sir? Yeah, everybody, we are being flooded with appreciation posts, posts of gratitude. Sir Roger, you know what? I felt like I just uh, spent three hours in in a worship, in a place of worship, whether it's a synagogue or a church or a temple or a mosque. Uh, you, you didn't just give us any, I mean, not just information. You have spiritually renewed and revived us. At least that's how I feel. Thank you so much. So again, big hand for Sir okay. Roger. Grabe, grabe, grabe. Thank you so much, Howard. Thank you so much, guys. I, I know I haven't reached out to you name by name, but you know, I can feel you. You can feel me. That's all. Yes. That and that's the, that's the best thing that you gave us, sir. The connection, the gift of connection. Sir Roger, we'll mm. be pausing for a two-minute break so that you can grab maybe a bite or a cup of coffee and other and uh, our oh you have it now so in our participants we will have the opportunity to type in their question at the Q&A but in the meantime before we pause for we pause for a break our birthday celebrants Delia Silvia Evangeline Abelia and Dan Christian Ramos happy birthday this is a day of celebration we're alive don't go away we'll be right back and be fast thanks Howard Cool.